like that, it's on you. Right now, it's on you. Okay, so you don't have to stand up here in a minute, too. So, okay. All right, go ahead and start. So. Oh, well, I didn't know we were live. <laughs> we're live. <laughs> hey, everybody. This is Unlucky Steve. I just want to do a little video with y'all tonight. You know, my wife is on, you know, PD, dialysis, home dialysis. And I know, uh, you know, before, you know, she started dialysis, no one told us anything about it. And, I mean, it, it's scary. You know, it's real scary. It's a serious matter. And, but if someone would have went over some things with us and shown us a few things, you know, prior to her actually having to start it, I think it would have made it a little bit easier on us from the very beginning. You know, uh, being on dialysis is a very serious situation. It's nothing to just, you know, sneeze at. I mean, it, it's, you're not on dialysis for no reason. But on the other hand, you know, it, it gives you life. It just takes a part of your body it, that her kidney isn't working. It, it works. She still goes, you know, to the bathroom and all, but the kidney doesn't clean out all the imperfections, you know, impurities. It doesn't filter out. Yeah, it doesn't filter out all the impurities that it needs to filter out. So that's what this machine right here is. This is our... Uh, ballast machine, it's a PD machine, and that's what we're going to show you step by step how it, how we hook up and how everything goes. So everything we do, you're going to see from before we start, or and and then when we end, we're going to go through the whole thing. So I hope it's not too long for you. It does take a little while to do this, but I think it's important for a lot of people out there. A lot of you may not want to watch it, and I understand, and I you know. I, we're just hoping that maybe we don't want anyone to have to do dialysis, but if someone is looking at that and the doctors have already talked to them about it, we wanted to give them a chance to see how this works and maybe it'll help them make a decision for themselves, you know. So usually the first thing we do is whenever we start, the first thing Tina has to do is that she has a little small computer little tablet and she has to weigh herself and so I'm gonna pull the scales out and so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna take I'm gonna take the camera for a minute and I'm gonna let her go through her process of what she normally does before we actually get started and all this is linked to the kidney center to where they see everything on this tablet okay so uh tina are you ready mm -hmm. okay and this is tina and we're going to get started on this this is the beginning and we're fixing to walk all the way through it and here we go so this is the tablet he told you about that they provide you with at the dialysis center because they're going to keep up with it for like three months i think and you have to take to do your blood pressure your weight you know put it all in there and keep it up for your doctor and I'm a diabetic, so I have to do my sugar, too. So it comes on. Get it going. You're not letting me since I already done it. So it's scheduled for the 27th. Okay. So what, what I did earlier before Steve come back, I went ahead and done it because it was getting late. So what I do is push this. And it tells me to take my weight, okay? So I'll go over and take my weight. And this is all linked together, the uh, the weight machine over here. Because it says you want to use your device. Right? This is all linked together, all computerized together. And that's the scale. And when you say use device. Yeah, and when she goes on that, there's the device. It automatically shows the weight and registers here. And they see it there. At so it's the, got a Bluetooth uh, light that comes yeah. on. And that way when you weigh it, goes right to the back. Yeah, so she's actually weighed. And then that's on the machine. That's on this device. And, and then it, it asks, Then she has to check her blood pressure, which they give her a blood pressure machine here. And uh, this is it. We won't actually do it because she's already done it. And so once she's done it for the night, 
it's already registered with them and we don't want to mess that up and every this is a hard copy and everything has to be logged on here everything she does and you take your temperature every night too yeah your temperature your blood sugar your weight and your your uh, pulse and everything and blood you know blood pressure and pulse and all so that's the first things that we do or that she has to do before we get started and then as you can see i'm going to just show you our setup now this is our machine and cabinet and then you can see the boxes here. We actually have about 30 of these all set up in the room. And uh, I'll show you some more of them here in just a second. And then I'll come back and, and go over some more stuff. And this is also another stack of just a month. This is only for a month, okay? So as you can see, of course, the light's a little dark over here. But that's, this is 30 some odd boxes and it, it, it's one box a night, there's two bags in it. And what I've got here is a bucket. Um, because when you set up with this machine, it normally is drained into maybe a toilet or something like that. But you can use other things which make it easier for you. And since the restroom is so far from the bedroom, that's a, that's a long tube because she has a tube attached to her, and you'll see that in just a moment. So I use a bucket, and it makes it a little easier, and then we just clean it out every day. So what we're going to get started on is that in this cabinet that I showed you, we have a lot of different items in here. This is a solution that's made of Purex. I can hear you. Real lightly, but yeah, that's a, a that's a solution that she has to clean her uh, personal tube with, and as yeah, it's made out of Purex, and it, you know, like, and these are little caps that go on, and uh, you have to keep inventory of all this. So, as she's setting and getting this ready, and then she has to have the gloves, because at a certain point of hooking this PD up. You do have to glove up and mask up. I'm going to use those. Oh, okay. And uh, I got to get these other gloves out for me because my hand's a little bit bigger. So now we need to get some mask. And these are the masks that you put on. And that's to make sure that you know, no germs or anything. There's, like I said, that at a certain time of hooking all this up, you have to be very careful. And uh, we will, you know, we will go over all that as we do this. All we're doing right now is getting everything that we do need for hooking up. And uh, I won't go over all that with you. It's, it's, it seems like it's a whole lot of stuff, and I guess it is until you actually get used to doing it a little bit and it doesn't take that long to actually you know prepare yourself it's a it's a little process but it's one that you know you have to do it and uh so at this point she's gotten all this stuff out and we're prepared so i'm gonna give her the camera and, get my tape ready. and uh yeah and she's getting tape ready so i want to just put the camera in that direction so you'll see the I mean, this is every, this is every step that we do so uh, she's what well, she's actually getting tape for her uh, bandages and stuff here in a little bit and she gets about oh normally I get eight normally about eight of them but I've already changed my uh, tubal deal so I don't need eight yeah, this may take a little longer than we thought. So I'm going to get just four of these. And you'll, you'll see what this tape is for here in just a little bit. That one's pretty messed up. Yeah. You better get a couple more. I don't know why they're messing up so bad.
like I said, it's a it's a process, you know, maybe you know. I was trying to take down so that you know you don't lose it. But no one can hear you whispering, baby girl. My little baby girl, she whispers a lot, yeah. You know, so if you hear some mumbling that <laughs> she thinks you you know, you hear. But she's got tubes and stuff like that in her ears and and they're messed up, so her hearing's not all that well, so to her, she thinks she's talking loud when she's not. I do. I mean, I know I probably got hear, ear problems too. But anyway, she's got her tape ready, and uh, I'm gonna give her the. Yeah, she's. I'm gonna give her the camera and let her just film me going through everything that you know we do at this point. All right, here we go. Okay. All right. So what I normally do is I come over here and behind the machine here's a button. When you turn that button on, you'll see it light up here green with just a bonus. While that's doing that, you see the green light. So while that's doing that, the first thing I do is I go, well, I'll just get it from here, and I'll get one of these boxes. And in this box are two bags. One, you'll see me, I'll put it up here, which has a heater right here, and it heats up the bag. And we'll set the other one right here. Here in a little bit, we'll connect all this together. But this is what goes in your belly and it stays in there for like an hour and a half at a time and then it drains out and it puts some more in and stays in for like an hour and a half and it drains out so it, it takes 10 hours all through the night um, maybe at some point we'll do a, a whole video like that you know but uh, I always just bring it over here out of my way a little bit <coughs> I take a little knife Cut the top off. It's got some pretty thick plastic. Now I'm gonna need this knife again here in a minute, so I'm gonna leave it right there. Now these bags are in another bag, and so you have to take them out of a bag. And there's a lot of condensation build up, so you want to make sure you get some paper towels and have them ready so you can wipe the bags down because they are going to be wet and you don't want to leave them wet you know so get you some paper towel and that way you keep everything sanitized your paper towels are clean they're sanitized and These are the bags we're talking about, and you have to rip them open. And uh, take them out of this bag. And of course, you probably can't see the condensation, but they're pretty wet. Just from the plastic being in plastic and, you know, getting hot outside. And I'm sure the summer months are or worse than the winter months, but you have to wipe them down. Now I'll try not to make this a very long video, <clears throat> so I'll let her film me, and I'm gonna go ahead and go through the process, and I'll talk while I'm going through it, but that way we can kind of move this on a little bit so she can actually get hooked up. There's two bags. You do the same thing with this one. Wipe it down. And you want to check these bags. Make sure that they're not outdated. Make sure there's little caps on there. Make sure there's no leaks. It has the amount that you're supposed to be giving. Yeah. So... You know, even when you're when you're wiping it down, then you can check all that out. You know, all, all at one time. And if you see any kind of cloudiness in it or anything, you can't use it. Get a new one. So we got one on the heater, and this one down here. This will also filter that one into a heater as well. So at that point. 
definitely have that. Did I? Thank you. Go over here. And these are our line hookups. You want to kind of look it over to make sure everything is good on it. Make sure you don't cut no tube or anything. You can rip them open. I just kind of cut the top of it. And I get it open. Then I can put my knife up. Then, at this point, is when I glove up. Because I'm starting to deal with tubes. And I want to make sure that I don't get any of my germs from my hands on the tubes. Because I will be hooking them up. We don't want to disinfect anything. So now, while I'm going to be getting that out, I come back over here, and I have to. And they give you a booklet, so don't think it's something you just got to learn. You know, like, and plus you go to week, two weeks of training. So they do help you out and you do learn all this and it's not nothing you can panic, you have to panic over. There's and also a phone number and you can call them anytime if you have any problems. But you have to come over and hit go and that says load the set. When that happens, this lever right here will release from inside and allow me to open that door here in a minute. But until I do that, we pull this out and take some of the tape off of it. Make sure these caps are on there. I'm not going to go over all that because we're not doing a training video. We're just going through the motions, more or less. And then it has all these little clamps. You have to make sure these clamps are closed. So I close them at this point. And after I get them closed, then I go to the machine. Now I can open this machine up drop the door down and this little device here goes in there it's all computerized with all these tubes on it and it only fits in there one way so you can't mess that up but it fits in there snug I mean it's just barely a fit sometimes uh, I wonder if I'm getting it in there but it, it fits in there make sure you get it in there good and you don't pinch these tubes when you shut the door and then you shut the lever down and then you hang this on this door here and snap it down here okay now this is our drain tube here and this is one of them lines and this is the tube that you can run all the way to your toilet or you know something like that i like to try to untangle it a little bit where it's not so rolled up make sure it drains good and i'm gonna kind of go through this a little fast if i can so i'm not keeping you too long and i just cut a small hole in that bucket the lid up you know it's got a lid on it so i just cut a little hole in the bucket and i place this down in that hole And then I get this out of the way so when she gets up at night, she doesn't trip over it. Try to keep everything as safe as you can you know, for the patient. So I just kind of move that out of my way. Now, <coughs> at this time, I like to take the line that will hook to her and go ahead and untape it. I'll be putting it back up there in just a moment, but I like to go ahead and untape it and untangle it a little bit before I go any further at this point. Because it does seem to tangle up a little bit. And when she gets up and moves around in the, in the room, I don't want it to be twisting up on her. Because this does hook to her body, and you'll see that in a little bit. And if it pulls, it pulls on that coil they put in her, and it could be very dangerous. So anyway, I put this back up where it was at after I get it untangled somewhat. 
then I have to hit the button again. And then it goes through a self test. And as it self tests, it takes just a couple minutes. I kind of just clean up my mess here. Give it a moment to self test. And if you're wondering about the mask, we're fixing to get to the mask. Because when she hooks up to her body, there's a moment when she unhooks the cap from her stomach, that means she's open to contamination. And we have to make sure the door is shut, turn the fans off, no pets can be in the room. You keep everything pretty much sanitized as well as you can for, for your area. And that's when we put the mask on so none of our germs for that it, it, moment that she's got her cap off that connects to her belly, you know, we don't want nothing, no germs to affect that area. And plus, you know, where, where the tube goes into her stomach, you have to kind of make sure that that stays non-infected. And you'll hear this beep here in just another minute. And when it does, then, and there you go. And then, at that point, I come over and I take all this to hook it all up. And I open open these clamps up so, so so that I don't forget I go ahead and open the clamp up on the patient's line and when we take the red one the red clamp line untangle it and it connects to the top bag red is for heat yeah but that's where the heater is and you pull the little tabs off of the bags the green tabs and then you take the top off that line and then you connect those. And you try to do it quickly because you don't want to leave them open. And then go ahead and open that clamp. And there's also a little fringe in here that kind of like got to be broke so the fluid will come through. So you twist both directions and you'll feel it break. Kind of move it around a little bit so that you know it's not still hung together. Just kind of watch everything, make sure it doesn't twist up. And then we'll do the same thing with this bag. Pull it off the bag, take the cap off the line, hook them on up. And then again, we'll open this clamp, and then we'll break the little seal inside there. Now, if your bags are hooked up at this point, we know that her, her line is open. The drain line has an extra on it and it stays closed. We don't want anything coming out of it. And this is just for an extra bag in case you have to have one so it stays closed. Now we got the bags hooked up and all the clamps are open. So now we'll go to a prime. Hit the button again. Now it's priming. <coughs> and it takes it about eight minutes or so to prime. So we have about eight minutes here to waste. Now, I know this seems like a lot of work. And it's, it is. It really is. But this isn't even all of it. Because even once we get this primed and then she has to hook up to her body, it's another line that has to be hooked up, the main line. Even at that point, it goes into where it fills into her. It has a certain uh, millimeter that it fills to. Mine's 1,900. They like to went to 25. That way they could cut down two hours because the more you, uh, the less you put in your body, the more yeah. hours it takes. Yeah. You know, but, you know, Tina's body you know, built, you know, she's not real tall, you know, so therefore she doesn't have as much room in this area to put a whole lot in there. If she was six foot tall like me, she could probably hold a lot more and she could cut down on her time at night. She does this about 10 hours every night. But 
when we get hooked up, then she's hooked up. Now, once that feels into her, it's a cycle. It's just, it's not just one feel and then that's it. Like we said, it, it, it feels so much into her and then it sets there. And it has sat there for like an hour and a half in her stomach. And it's in the lining of her stomach. It doesn't, it doesn't go right into her stomach. It's in the lining of her stomach. Kind of like the third kidney. So in that time, it's called a dwell. So when it's in dwell, if you have to go about your house and do some things or whatever, you know, you can unhook. They, they asked you not to, but it's 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 doable. You be very careful. Watch the germs. Turn your fans off if you have any. Make sure you don't pass. Just like when you're hooking up, you have to mask up and glove up. Turn the fans off. Shut the door. Pants are out of the room. And then you can go ahead and unhook. So you have an hour and a half of dwell time. But <laughs> go ahead and do what you got to do. Get you something to eat, something to snack on. Go to the bathroom. And, and just do whatever you got to do and make sure you're hooked back up before that hour and a half. You don't want to, you don't want to lose no time. So the machine will start beeping when you get, when you go over 45 minutes yeah. unhooked, it starts beeping at you. Yeah. So, you know, like she said, it, it, in 45 minutes now, even though it's in dwell for an hour and a half, the machine's going to start yelling and say, Hey, we're not hooked up after 45 minutes. But that gives you some time. And you can actually do that, you know, throughout the night, not just at one time, because it, it will drain out of you, and then it'll go through all that process again. It'll, it'll go back and put some more in you, and then it'll be in dwell again for another hour and a half. If you need to, if you have to, then you can actually unhook again and take care of what you got to take care of. So there are times through the night, but... Like, we normally start at 9. That means we don't get through around 7. Now, that's 10 hours. So, through the night, in most of our cases anyway, in our situation, Tina doesn't get a lot of sleep. Even though they do say, well, you can do it at home, that way you can sleep, you can get rest. Because the way that works, it goes in her stomach, and it's kind of like a coil they, they put in. And it also comes all the way back to the right above the tailbone, to my understanding. So, on her, I guess maybe because of her body's shape and size, you know, being short, depending on how she's laying at night, it doesn't drain out very well so the machine starts beeping and when it beeps we get up i get up and i look at it you know and if, if it doesn't wake her up if she's asleep then i wake her up and i have her to move her position so that or either she has to just get up or set up so that that will drain now it's not supposed to do that to my understanding they're looking at that they may want to go back in there and do another surgery and reposition that also, there's more involved than that, you know, um, due to her illnesses and her, her magnitude of medication she's been on for so long, she's, she has chronic bowel syndrome, you know, which we all know medicines will do that to you anyway. And that's not good when you're going through PD like this, because you can't be constipated, in other words, and have this in you because, well, it blocks it up. So that's a big issue. You know, if that's an issue for you, make sure you're taking something to help go to the bathroom. Make it, you know, it, it makes, try to make sure you don't have to have another surgery for sure. Um, because if the PD home dialysis doesn't work for medical reasons like that and it continues on and on and on you'll end up going dialysis here and i there. have a deal in my arm that we did over what a year and a half ago yeah she has a fistula done here where they take the vein the main artery 
and they connect those two together. And you can actually, it's got like a little knot there, actually. But you can put your hand in there, and it just goes gush, 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 gush. You can just, man, it's just, you feel it. That's for other dialysis, like bringing the blood, taking the blood out and putting it back in, filtering it and all that. You know, we're trying not to get to that point because we are, she is on a kidney transplant list, and we are just starting the process of, of going that route or she has to go to the doctors and, and take you know all these tests and everything and then even after that there's a whole lot more involved in that process to work if we have a live donor like say I'm gonna be the live donor if I was a match you know hopefully I would be but I don't know but I still have to get checked out now if I am a live donor and a match then there's a whole lot of process I have to go through or whoever it is even, even if they're a match, that doesn't mean they're going to be capable of doing it until all this, you know, due process is done and, and, and they're cleared of everything and, and then someone says, okay, we're good to go. But, you know, that's that's a lot for who for my wife and for, her, you know, whoever. I mean, there's going to be a lot of other people that's going to be going through a few things like getting their blood type checked. And if they are a good match, then they'll go to the next step, next step, you know. And but remember this, every uh, month you have to do all kinds of blood work, like I'm going to go next week. They do all kinds of blood work so that they can, uh, so that they can uh, check where your blood's at, so it's see if you're getting enough medicine through this dialysis. You know, if they need to do more time, then they will, and I'm hoping they cut down on mine some, but... I do know they told me that there's women that's smaller than me that only can put 14 units at a time, so they're constantly doing this 14, 16 hours. So you don't really have to do that. But they check your blood every month and uh, keep watch on you. And this stuff has sugar in it, so I'm a diabetic, and they haven't figured out yet uh, what to do. But from my understanding, they're going to probably put my um, insulin, some insulin in these bags so that my sugar is not going up through the night like it is. Okay. Now, we don't like for just a couple of minutes, so yeah. she's going to start getting ready, which if she don't, then we're going to be waiting on her. So I'm going to take the camera, and uh, I'll give her a little bit of privacy here to get her self prepared. Um, what we'll do here in a minute, when you'll hear the beep on the machine, and. Uh, and then the machine will say, you know, then there you go. And, and see, it says, check patient line. And it says, connect yourself. Okay? Now, this line right here, let me back up for This line right there, this one here, has that blue lid on it. What we'll do is take this lid off here in a minute. So when you take this lid off, at that moment, when you take that lid off, then and she takes the lid off over here on her line going into her stomach, that's the critical time we're talking about. So what I'm going to do at this moment, I'm going to put my mask on. And I've got sanitizer for my head. Yeah, she makes sure she's sanitized up. She has a little a little fan over there she needs to make sure she turns off. And then I, I, I always have a fan on. So I'm going to turn this fan off. And the door is already shut. So you see my gloves. You see my mask. And you can, I'll show you her. And she's gloving up. And you're going to see this tube. Now this is this is the patient's lying life. That's the tube that comes out of her body and under her arm. Under and it goes where the gauze is right here into her body. Okay. Now show you. No, 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 no. But it goes in right here. Right. It, yeah. Yeah, we don't want to do all that. Okay. So what she's gonna do is she takes that line right there. And she wipes it down with that solution, which is 
Purex bleach. And she has to clean that really well. You know, a good minute, if not two minutes. Because you don't want any germs from anything. Once you open that lid, that's an open valve to her body. And uh, very critical, very dangerous. And everything needs to be done really quick. So, okay. now, so, at this time, I'm going to come back over here to the machine, and I'm going to remove this, make sure that line's open, and we look at this. You have to make sure the fluid level is at the top, and there's no leaks, nothing else. Everything looks good. Um, can you take this one off? So we're gonna film her. She's undoing the lid from the line and now the lid off of her. And then she puts them together and she does it that quick. Now that's that's iodine coming out. That's some stuff that's in the, in it. So, and she's dripping it everywhere. She don't see it. No, I'm trying to find that. <laughs> so, you know. And get it cleaned off get, good. Clean it good. Make sure that's open and then right here. You'll open that. That has, now a, it's open. Now that has a valve that's open. When then you do that, you have to come back to the machine, and then you hit this button twice, and when it says initial drain, that means she's hooked up, and that all this goes in the trash. Yeah, all this. Uh, everything goes in the trash. And that's the process of home dialysis. Seems like a whole lot of work. It's not really a whole lot of work. Wish no one had to do it. You know, I pray none of you ever have to do it. But no one ever showed us, and we wanted to show you in case it's something that you're looking at that you might have to do. And if you're was worried about how bad it was going to be. And don't worry. It, it's it's. it's well, one good thing is if it feels too tight and you can't breathe, you need to tell your doctor so that they can lower the dosage down on how much they're putting in. Yeah. Because you got to be able to breathe because it does get full and tight. Yeah. Yeah. Like she said, it, you know, they may they may have to change things up how much you know they're putting in. You know and. and and that machine over there, if you have to, you can stop it, you know. I mean, it's just a little machine. And you can stop it, you know. It, so, anyway, I hope this is some kind of help to you. Like I said, my name is Steve. It's my wife, Tina. And we hope you never have to do anything like this. But if you do, we hope we helped you out a little bit to take some of the fear away from you. Because, like I said, we didn't know. And, yeah, it's bad enough. But your mind can really make things a lot worse, okay? Appreciate you. And uh, we'll call her, call her back at you later. Bye. Bye.